Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text this day comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew in chapter 10, verses 34 to 39 specifically. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In the course of your jobs, in the course of school, in the course of your life, has anyone ever said to you, I have a big job that I want you to do? Now when you hear that, what do you think? Are you excited? Are you like, yeah, bring it on, I'm ready? Or is there a part of you that says, oh no, not me. I don't want anything to do with this. It's probably a little bit of both, right? Can you imagine being one of the disciples as Jesus is preparing you to go out and do this big job? Imagine their reaction. In today's text, Jesus continues to prepare his disciples, to prepare them as he sends them out on their own for the very first time, going out two by two to proclaim to the lost sheep of Israel, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So naturally, Jesus fills them in on what they're going to do, and he throws in a few warnings, a few instructions. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. A little bit of advice then. So be wise as serpents and innocents as doves. But then, then he throws that curveball. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. Does that not strike us as something completely out of left field? The Prince of Peace is coming with a sword. Now to be clear, the kind of sword he's talking about is, is not a real sword with a sharpened blade set atop a handle. No, Jesus is talking about a sword in that he is bringing strife, division, trouble into this world. It's not really a, a strange idea. We think of a sword in the modern world, we probably would think of a gun. And even though there is a division between those who are advocates of a strong Second Amendment and those who are advocates of stricter gun control, the mere presence, sometimes even the mere mention of a gun, causes division and strife. There's simply those who are not comfortable being around such a powerful weapon. So no matter what side you're on, we understand this, this sense of a sword. But now that we know the kind of sword that Jesus is really talking about, does he explain what kind of strife and division that he means to bring? Verses 35 and 36 he says, For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Wow. A man against his father. A daughter against her mother. Your own parents will be set against you. And when Jesus says set against, he doesn't mean the kind of disagreement that we 
like to enjoy in modern society, that kind of, well, we'll just agree to disagree. No, this set against is fundamental opposition, eternal consequences. It is, as he speaks of the last day, the sheep and the goats. But our world hates to make distinctions. It hates when it says, you're right, you're wrong. You are a sheep. You are a goat. Now the world and Satan will plead in your ear, what if, what if he was a really good goat? What if he was the Dalai Lama of goats, the best goat ever? Would God be so cruel to send away such a good goat? He just can't be a God of love if he does that. Well, the truth is he's not the God that we've created, not the God that we sometimes want. But that is the Lord who has revealed to himself in Holy Scripture. So do not fall into Satan's trap that says, what if? In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we're told with absolute clarity, without faith it is impossible to please God. Impossible. And that really doesn't leave a whole lot of wiggle room. But you know, even as, as wonderful a goat as the Dalai Lama might be, it's absolutely nothing like seeing your mom, the woman who gave you life, who cared for you, who loves you, being numbered with the goats. It's nothing like your own son being numbered with the goats. We are to love one above all. And that one who trumps all others, his name is that which is above all names, Jesus Christ. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus, like his Father, is a jealous God. And he's right to be so. It is his right, his privilege, the truth of who he is that he can and should and must demand the first fruits of your love. So how are we to survive in a world that hates us for loving him? A world that takes the ones you love, the ones that should be closest to you, and sets them against you. How are we to survive? By Christ. Christ the crucified. We are to stay true to him. To focus on him. And not to look back. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Take up your cross and cling to Christ. And you might say that's well and good, but what does that mean? And that is a great Lutheran question. What does it mean? What is this cross? In the very simplest terms, it's a beating. It's that beating that you're going to take from the world on account of Christ. For some, that beating is fatal. We hear of it. We see it. In the first century, it was absolutely true. And so Christ, in verse 39, pulls no punches. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
Christ is setting up a binary truth, a very strict this or that situation. First, he says, whoever finds his life in this world, he says, whoever finds his life will lose it. Because the world is fallen. It is sinful. Sin is death. But then Jesus says, whoever loses his life in this world for my sake, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What's the most important part of that sentence? What do we hear? Whoever loses his life will find it. Instead, our ears really should tune in to that most important part, that most vital truth that says, for my sake. The only thing that says is faith in Christ Jesus. And that is a free gift of the Holy Spirit. For it was on His cross that you were redeemed that you were forgiven of your sins, and because of His cross, that you are set against the world. That you are set against the goats. And so thanks be to God that we sheep, we sheep have a good shepherd who carries a sword. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.